Hey coach, welcome back to the Make Money Coaching Sports YouTube channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. And if you need to reach me or connect with me, number of ways you can do that, visit the description below this video. And number of ways you can either book a free 15, 20, 15 to 20 minute call with me, or we can exchange uh, questions. You can send me any questions to text me either to my WhatsApp number, which is below, or to my email address. At this point, over the last three years, I've responded to every single email and every single WhatsApp uh, message that has come to me, all right? So don't stay stuck with your business. Reach out to me, uh, love to connect and see how we can help you to grow and scale your business. Now, today I want to talk about financial challenges of indoor soccer facility owners in the US. Now, our company has worked with a lot of coaches who have then gone on to open indoor training facilities. So if you're in basketball, you're in soccer, if you're in another sport, it might even be baseball, okay? And you are currently an owner of an indoor facility okay this video is going to be for you now because i'm in soccer myself and i work predominantly with soccer coaches right this is more geared towards uh, the soccer industry but the challenges and struggles that i'm going to share with you today are going to be relevant to coaches in basketball in whatever sport that you are in and you're running an indoor training facility Okay, so I want to share with you uh, the screen in front. So as you can see, I've got a number of highlighted points and I'm just going to go through them very quickly. And what I want you to do is if you're going through any of these challenges with your indoor training facility, reach out to me. Our company would love to uh, see how we can help you to turn your struggles around and improve your business. All right. The first one is operational costs. Okay. Now, there's a massive difference from using a park to run your training sessions or to leasing a facility. Okay, When you either lease a facility or you become the owner of a facility, there's a lot more overheads uh, costs to it, right? So you've got to obviously pay, pay for the cost to just maintain the facility, uh, a lot more bills are going to be ranking up. So the operational costs is what essentially uh, a lot of coaches struggle with and fight and this this adds to a lot of their financial uh, problems that they encounter later on down the line so a lot of coaches what they tend to do and this is a very common one is when they move into an indoor training facility they they keep their prices the same now, when they keep their prices the same, they're not realizing that, right, we have operational costs now for the indoor facility, which means that our costs are now going to get a lot bigger, which means that the, the cost of training and coaching clients cannot maintain the same. It's got, got to go up to reflect on the operational costs, right? So operational costs, it might be if you're paying for staff, um, all admin work, uh, taxes, right? So everything that comes down to the, the operations of the facility is something a lot of co uh, coaches struggle with. And this is because they keep their prices the same as they were when they didn't have the indoor facility, right? So they don't adapt. And a lot of them are scared to increase the price because they don't want to lose uh, customers. Next one, seasonal fluctuations. Again, and this... This is a struggle that a lot of coaches have, even if they don't have a facility, right? There might be moments in the, in, in the season or in the year where your facility becomes quieter. So the summer could be one of them because a lot of people are away on vacation. So you're not going to have the same amount of people of traffic going in and out of your, your facility than you would have maybe in February, okay? Uh, Christmas, again, that's another one. People are away. So there, there's going to be a lot of times in the year where your facility 
is going to be kind of up and down and your income fluctuates. Now, if this is a challenge for you, we, our company have helped coaches to overcome this and we can show you a number of ways that you can um, use your facility to generate more revenue in those quieter months. Uh, the next one, competition with outdoor alternatives. Okay, so again, there might be a time of the year where a lot of people don't want to be indoors, right? There's certain areas in the United States where when we get to the summer season, you know, it's really, really hot, okay? And some, some people don't want to be in an indoor space because they want to be outside, right? They want to be in the sun. They want to be in fresh air, right? So this could be a, a challenge, for some coaches, right? It kind of comes down to seasonal as well. Now, maybe in the winter months, your facility does really well because everyone has to be indoors. But then when you get to the summer months and some of your customers who are using your facility can go out and use a park, public park and they don't have to pay any fees, then that's when your business starts to fluctuate, okay? So that's... You, you're going to have a lot of competition when you when you are an indoor training facility owner. Okay, in the good months, well, of good weather, people can just go outside and do their activities outside. So if you hire out your facility to local teams and um, local trainers, right, they might want to cut down their costs during the good months of of weather. So they might instead of paying to use your facility they might go and use a public park or an alternative outdoor uh, venue so that obviously brings a lot of challenges because that's revenue that you are losing uh, with your facility uh, marketing and branding uh, a lot of coaches don't know how to market and brand their facility okay what they and this is a very common one is they kind of market and promote it under their own brand right and the problem is that some parents start to, if your facility or your business, shall we say, if your business has a bad reputation, okay, your coaching business has a bad reputation and a lot of parents have been talking to each other and, you know, it just, it has a very bad vibe and this happens, this happens in this industry. Maybe that coach has treated their clients very poorly uh, maybe it has a lot of bad reviews and then your facility uh, you name it after your business then you know it's going to have that same reputation so that's one challenge a lot of coaches have uh, the second one is kind of uh, sponsorship right they don't know how to create sponsors to sponsor their indoor facility and this is something we do help coaches uh, setting these type of sponsorship deals up where you can have a local business sponsor your indoor facility, right? That helps with the marketing and branding because if the local business is quite big and they've got a lot of traffic, then a lot of eyeballs can get onto your indoor venue, right? So that's another challenge that a lot of coaches have, separating their, their coaching business with the actual venue and how to market and brand uh, how to create sponsorship deals to, to help with uh, the cost of running the indoor facility. Now, the next one is limited revenue streams. This is a, a very good one and a very common one. A lot of coaches that run facilities, they don't know how to create different streams of income for their indoor facility. So most of them don't know how to run other things aside from one-to-one, -one, small group, or the odd camp. Like there's a lot of alternative options that you can uh, do to create more revenue streams. So hiring it out to local schools, the hours that your facility isn't busy, uh, hiring it out to local clubs, uh, doing events, uh, hiring it out to uh, Zumba instructors, right? So using your venue, not just for sport, but maybe for other fitness activities, for other instructors or dance instructors in your local area, right? They hire out your facility, they bring in 
a, a lot of parents who maybe like to do Zumba and you know, and that creates more eyeballs on your indoor facility, but you also it also drives traffic because then you can sell them onto other things, right? If you have a bar inside your, your training facility, you can sell them um, food, uh, drinks, etc. Now the next one, maintenance and upkeep, right? So this is a big one, especially for indoor facility owners, maintenance and, and upkeep. Right, the maintenance costs of an indoor facility are is very high. Now, if you've got a turf uh, field and it's indoor, and you have to get that changed, then that is a massive cost for the owner. Okay, because changing an indoor soccer turf, right, it's anywhere. From you know, you could pay anywhere between twenty to thirty k to change that, just that turf, right? And that's a massive cost for a lot of coaches. Now, also, if there's any leaks, problems in the bathrooms, right? All of that adds up to your costs, okay? And if you aren't creating different revenue streams and you you're you're not creating options for that indoor facility to generate revenue for you. The maintenance costs are going to be very, very expensive. And there'll be some maintenance that you won't be able to cover. And how does that affect coaches? It affects coaches because, for example, if you're in a very cold part of the US, you might get uh, pipes that burst because of the cold, right? And that could create floods in the venue, which means that the venue will, you know, you'd have to maybe shut it down. Uh, you won't be able to, people won't be able to use your facility and that just can create a lot of problems. Okay, so that's another financial challenge a lot of uh, owners have. And then the, the last one is economic downturns, right? So the financial instability or as we are going through at the moment, inflation, when inflation becomes very high, uh, people have a lot of more, uh, well, everything becomes more expensive. So people start limiting down certain things that they spend money on so if your venue uh, is quite expensive for a lot of people to use then what people tend to do is they find either alternatives or they don't use your facility okay and that's not to say that you need to be a cheap venue because you do have a lot of cost but that's just it goes with the economic downturn right when there's a downturn Teams will start to look after their costs. Uh, individuals start to look after their costs. Parents start to spend less on coaching sessions, right? And it just all mounts up and it can drive a lot of financial challenges to your indoor facility, okay? So if you're going through any of these things with your indoor venue, reach out to me. Love to speak to you. You can book a call with me. Just go down in the description below, apply for a call. Tell me what you're currently doing. Tell me about your coaching business or tell me about your facility. Okay. And then we can jump on a call and discuss what challenges you're going through and see if we are, if we can help you uh, to grow and scale. Okay. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.